This show is brought to you by Royal Menswear. Royal Menswear is renowned for its designer brands and exclusive collections. From casual to formal wear, made to measure suits as well as suit rental, drop into Royal Menswear in Tralee for both the relaxed and enjoyable shopping experience. Royal Menswear is the perfect place to find a casual or formal outfit for any occasion. Royal Menswear for men with style. Hello and you're welcome uh, to the Backdoor uh, Football Show. Um, delighted to be by former court footballer uh, Paul Kerrigan. Um, what's been like, I suppose, Paul announcing the retirement um, across social media, I suppose? Yeah, I suppose. Look, I, we've been fairly low key. I haven't been on social media for a good few years. Uh, would have had kind of Twitter a good eight years ago and Instagram two or three years ago. And that's as grand, like, I suppose. I would have found it would have been a bit like I wouldn't have been too interested in when I was playing, but uh, it is nice now to go on it and just catch up with people and stuff. So uh, you get a good, you're very easily contactable nowadays, like with all those. Um, so it was nice to get a couple of messages, but uh, yeah, I suppose done in Dustin Osher and uh, I suppose just looking to the future, really. And you, you know, when you're retired and you're putting your statement together, is it hard to just, I suppose, put everything into a statement after your playing period, did you find? Yeah, I like. I suppose the county board would be asking you to to throw out something, and you're just trying to try not make it too long when or whatever. And just like there's no point in going and thanking individuals because you'd be there all day. Like so, just I try to make it a little bit general and uh, just wish the boys who are still there best of luck and stuff. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, that's what I try to do. It, um, try to keep it low key as possible. And did you think about doing one more year? Or is this always going to be last year? Uh, no, I kind of in my head it was my last year. I suppose uh, I kind of was that piece of it really. I kind of I suppose that we we had a long club championship in Nemo. We we were beaten by Corrigan in January. And we were nearly back in with, with Cork kind of ten days, two weeks later, and up for national league games and stuff like that. And uh, obviously the, the COVID um, kind of elongated the season there. So I was kind of thinking, and uh, I just said I'd stick it out, and like we're nearly got to the end of November with it. Um, so like kind of I had in my head that I was going to finish up, so I was happy enough. And like I suppose a lot of people after they retire um write an autobiography. Have you thought about that or anything yet? I'd say it'd be a short enough book now to be honest with you. So uh there's plenty of more successful people have written books, so I leave that to to other people now. She's no interest in it to be honest with you at all, or I don't think I'd have the, too much demand really. So no. And how do you reflect on your Cork career overall? Uh, up very up and down, like first five years are generally really successful and really competitive and a top team. And maybe the next seven or eight years that followed, we were pretty low, pretty low and kind of started to make a little bit of a upward curve the last two years. Um, and obviously a kind of a, a real low then to finish up, I suppose, really losing a monster final at the tip. So uh, real ups and downs, but I've been lucky to experience some huge highs really like. And um, I've seen you mentioned the commit the commitment levels. Have you been amazed, like when you started out in two thousand and eight, the commitment then to what it is now? Yeah, well, there was always great commitment there because guys were really top of their game. But I just think that like the, the fitness levels required seem to go up every five years, and it's just gone very, very high. Like um, I suppose there's more video analysis. There wasn't a whole huge pile when I started off. Do you know what I mean? It was just kind of starting to come in, maybe in the kind of mid to late 2000s but now it's instant like your instant feedback so um it's just it's just it's i suppose the older you get i suppose maybe the less tolerable you get for meetings and video analysis you just want to get out and play so i suppose i think it definitely has gone up the last five years like you know if, if one county is doing something earlier and it's going well every county has to do it then do you know what i mean and would you say like from all this commitment and everything that the enjoyment factor is somewhat um, I suppose taken away from the game. Ah, uh, no. Like I suppose I really enjoyed the last couple of weeks or the last couple of months training in the Cork, and I tried to enjoy the last two years because I knew it was coming to the end. But uh, maybe if you leave pressure and stuff like that, and you're on social media and and maybe look into that too much, maybe the pressure might take away a bit from the enjoyment. But I found when we were very competitive with Cork, and the pressure of winning big games and being performing at a high level was that was there was pressure there and. Um, but it was still enjoyable to try chase that. Do you know what I mean? 
And looking at this year, like how much preparation actually went into that Kerry game for the semi final? Ah, uh, yeah, like we done a lot of work, like every team over COVID, uh, working on the skills, and we we done video analysis over Zoom, you know, to keep things taking over, uh, and we just worked on like as soon as we came back, whatever it was. I think we delayed our county final was one of the latest fixed for. I think we had about six or seven weeks of a panel, and we just everything was towards Kerry and was to do a job on Kerry and we and we did it the first game and then was tried to do it on tip but didn't work out obviously but um yeah look a lot of it came together it was, it was fairly um tough conditions on the night as well you know and a lot of our big players maybe didn't perform uh so it kind of it kind of fell into arms really and yeah the knockout championship did it make it extra special like I suppose for you as players because you're in the long grass people were expecting Cork to put it up to Kerry, but no one was really expecting it, expecting you to win apart from people in your camp. Yeah, I would have felt from the start like there would have been definitely more pressure on them because everyone was talking them up to to, to dethrone Dublin like and, and be the next team. So we would have been very confident in that regard and then we were prepared really well, like it was just our preparation was really well and the standards were really high. So I felt fairly confident going into the game and then I remember the morning of the game when we met in the hotel, I just so when, you're, when you go to a game, you can just kind of feel it in the air, like you could just feel the vibe. And uh, I just, I, I, I thought we'd put it up to carry that day, and, and luckily we came out on the, the right side of it. Yeah, and like the system you perfected that day was unbelievable. But, but were you surprised to see Marquine coming back from the AFL to play with you? Um, well, he, he was training with us, like he trained with us for about six weeks, like you know. Um, and I know, I think at the time when he was going to go over first day, I think he might have been training with us on our extended panel then, do you know what I mean? So it, it is no surprise he wanted to play, like, you know, he's played all the way up for Cork. Um, he was a nice bonus, like, um, you know, he's a good athlete, big, big young player, and obviously had, had the eye for goal and stuff like that. But um, he was a, he was just an addition. We had a good panel going, um, was very competitive to get into our panel, and, and he, he made a good impact when he came over in fairness to him. And with the young lads, I suppose, coming from the under-20 success last year, did you feel your role, I suppose, in the dressing room with your experience was more important than ever this year? Yeah, I suppose I tried to be a positive influence, um, especially on the younger lads. And like there was, um, like it came to me no surprise, Sean Me, in one example, he had a good, very good game against, like throughout the league, he was constantly asking questions, you know, I would have marked him a lot and just looking for advice. And that's what you want. Like you want fellas who are trying to to better themselves and better the team, kind of every week. Um, Colin McCallan inside the same Nordian fella, a forward would have been asking questions constantly. Where you know, um, but then you just try not to stifle them, just try not to overthink it, and then try to play with a bit of abandon as well. You know, and, and they, they did um, for a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, I would have felt a bit of responsibility there. To myself and James Lockley would be the the two oldest by a bit on the team, and. Um, he was obviously injured, so I kind of felt that it was my responsibility maybe to help out Ian McGuire, our captain, as well, in that regard. And the Munster final didn't go the way you wanted, beaten by tip 17 points to 14. Do you feel you underestimated them, or it was just very hard to come back down to earth after the Kerry game? Yeah, it's just hard to put our finger on it. Like, we, like, especially in Cork, there was a lot of hype about after beating Kerry, like, and pushing on or whatever. Um, like we didn't underestimate them because they're going really since 2011. Like when they when they won the minor, they got to a 21 All Ireland final. Then after that, and they beat us then in 2016. Like so, uh, like we didn't underestimate them. We just we were like with the Nacho Championship, you just have to be on your game on the day, and we were very flat, uh, kind of really pedestrian, really. Like and we didn't really penetrate them at all, and um, like they were the better team. But I thought by a good bit on the day, which is really disappointing. Yeah, I mean, do you think it was just a trap, like even the younger players, um, I suppose, tip were playing with numbers back and they were really forcing you to shoot, I suppose, inside the scoring zone, but probably you were disappointed with taking, I suppose, a few shots that you probably wouldn't have taken on a normal day. Yeah, we were, I think, we didn't really create any clear-cut goal chances or, you know, we didn't really danger um, their keeper or a bit, so... Uh, we were maybe trying to force things then, like, and we just we just had no real flow in the in the, in our attacking play at all. And I think like Luke Connolly's freeze was keeping us in it. Do you know what I mean? He was really on fire, and he went off at time injured. So like we got it back to two. Do you know, and if we maybe Luke on the field, 
any kind of free within 50 yards he was kind of putting over so like we just it was just down to ourselves we just didn't have any not, we, I wouldn't say we didn't have a plan because we did but we just didn't get into any sort of groove attacking wise at all and the injuries like people would forget like you didn't have Sean Powder, Kevin Flav, Luke Connolly as well like they, they were massive blows yeah, we didn't like it. Well, the way the COVID went, everyone would have had injuries, you know, with the, the high level of training and intensity. But like we lost a lot of backs, like you mentioned, those And then on top of that, you would let's say Ke- Kevin Crowley, um, James Lockery, and um, uh, Liam O'Donovan would have been huge losses in the defence as well, like really pushing to start. Do you know what I mean? And they would have been a bit more experienced. But um, we did have a lot of injuries, but all oh, teams do, like, and I suppose. Um, like still, like you can only put fifteen players out in the field, so like they were just better on the Sunday day. And did you find it hard as a player going from starting all the time to a sub? Um, at the start, a bit, yeah. Uh, but I suppose with age, you kind of look in your role a bit different. Um, I suppose under Ron and I was, I've been coming on more so than I've started. But like under him, like last year, I started against Kerry in the Munster final and then the Dubs in the Super Eight. So he's kind of picked me for a couple of big games. You know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, I suppose it takes a bit of while to use it, but then, like, the way I see it doing, I try to just be, look, I'm going to be coming on when the game is at its most important. Do you know what I mean? So that's the way I look at it. And the tough days, like, you've had, you've got criticised being down in Division 3. How tough was that as players to take? Yeah, I suppose, like, there's been some, I, as I said, I've been lucky to be there for good days. There's, there's a lot of lads who have been taking a lot of criticisms for the beatings we've taken over the years, like, Kind of down in Cork, there's fair standards and fair expectation, um, and it's it can be tough going at times. And look, it was kind of we were in a bit of free fall there. Like we just got went down to Division One, then down to Division Two on the last day. Uh, that happens twice. Like John you know, we went down to Division Two and Division Three in the last day. Sorry. Um, so like it's just it was tough going. And look, we started to hopefully to come back up, and hopefully lads can be really competitive in Division Two next year, and be competitive again against Kerry and Munster and Tip and Munster, and then push on. What do you put the struggle down to in the last few years, I suppose, before 2019, 2020? Yeah, I suppose, look, we uh, coming in, I think, after 2013, we did a massive turnover of players. The panel became really young, really inexperienced, and then there was just a lack of continuity there, like, let's say, off the field, constant change of managers every two years, constant change of s and we didn't really have anywhere, any training base only since this year. Do you know what I mean? We were being moved all over the place because the park was being done up and things like that. So that was off the field. But then on the field, let's say, we just weren't performing. We weren't really that coherent as a team. And then a lot of years then, there could be six, seven, eight lads uh, gone from the panel every year. Do you know what I mean? So it was constant turnover. So it's hard to build kind of a bit of, kind of coherence there and you know, build a style and all that. And it just we were just kind of a bit all over the shop there for a couple of years. But I think it's kind of settled down a bit now. And is the big change like you'd like to see as a former court player now? Like you kind of come nearly every five years in bursts and put in a massive performance and win something. But it is what you'd like to see year in year out that Cork can always be competitive rather than coming every five years. Yeah, like, with an all or D plus cycle five years and like like the good teams like Dublin and Kerry have a really good base and then they're adding two three four lads every year do you know what I mean every year there's there's good really good quality guys coming through so we just like we can't wait like really like for like let's say one superstar to come through we need to start adding guys who are really good every couple of years um, and just to be really competitive and get up again I suppose to division one and just be ultra competitive in division one would be a good start and what do you make like I suppose when you started out to play and now against the packed defences and everything. Yeah, like when I started out in 2008, it was 15 on 15. Uh, and then Donegal kind of revolutionised it a bit in 2012, like 2011, 2012. And then as they were successful, a lot of teams copied them. And nowadays it's, it is really as a part of the course. Like we were doing an analysis for Kerry. Generally, when they didn't have the ball, they could have easily 13, 14 lads behind the ball. Do you know what I mean? And, we're no different. We like to flood the middle third of the field um, and, and, and get the turnovers there. So it's just it's just the way it is now, you know, um, and it's just a part. Of it. it just probably turns out there's probably a little bit more carrying of the ball than the old traditional kicking, you know, 
uh, kick into the full forward line looking for runners off. But you know what I mean? That's probably not as much. And the new rules brought in this year, um, a lot of people don't seem to be fans of them at all. Are you along the similar lines? Yeah, I don't like the mark, to be honest with you. I, I just think it's 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 not our game. Like, do you know what I mean? It's um, We're being rewarded for a good foot pass, you know, and you know, the game is called football. That should be a part of it, do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I just used to enjoy a good foot pass in. Forge receives it, and he's you could have one of the best as far as in the country, taking on one of the best defenders in the country, and that was really exciting. So I wouldn't be a fan of the mark now at all, to be honest with you. And COVID coming this year, um, I suppose it was one of the first years, but I suppose what did you make of like the club back before the county? Like, like everyone all around the country really seemed to enjoy it. Yeah, um, I think the split season is the only way to go, looking at it now, you know. Uh, I think definitely our club lads got a real kick out of it. You know, in Cork, we, we had three group games, a quarter, then a semi, and it was every two weeks. Do you know what I mean? So we knew exactly when we had those games, and it was uh, it was really enjoyable. I think it's the only way to go, to be honest with you. And did you find it hard as, after a long season with Cork, going back with Nemo and then on to Provincial Series? Like, do you think it eventually catches up with you? Yeah, like, I suppose that would have been a reason. Let's say I would have been relatively injury free, but I just have generally had maybe three, four, five really long seasons like that have kind of been 13 months and then take a little break and start into a season again. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've done that a good few times. So you put a good few miles on the clock that way. Um, I just think the split season definitely worked very well. I think it's, it should be definitely the way to go. I think you could imagine like if crowds were allowed to go to the club games, they would have loved it. Do you know what I mean? Like every couple of every couple of weeks, a good championship game. So I think, I think everyone would benefit from it. And um, like... Just early on in your um, career for Cork, you broke in in 2008, but that rivalry with Kerry at that time, how special was it? Yeah, it was class, to be fair. I would have been the supporter before I came in, and obviously Kerry were really strong in 2000s there, do you know, there was in Tyrone, and so I would have known all the players, and then Cork kind of got competitive, got the other in the final 2007, you know, semi-final 2006, so it's come into it, it was fairly class, and you were playing against the top, teams in the country like we, we we'd play Kerry geez we was draw against them an awful lot you know what I mean so you could play them three times a year in championship you know um so it, it was class you know and, and there was really big rivalry there you know it was it was really good you know I remember just hot days in Killarney you know packed crowds and stuff like that so it was, yeah it was very good and as a player like year in year out with that sort of rivalry like what's it like to be playing in the middle of it like you see clips of Noel O'Leary and Paul Gavin, like the intensity of this rivalry. Yeah, you, I, I wouldn't something I wouldn't be taking for granted. Like you know, that used to be a big part. Of it. You might have Noel marking Galvin, Miskela marking Declan O'Sullivan, you know, Anthony Lynch or Michael Shields on the Gooch. Do you know what I mean? And the uh, Mark O'Shea then at Donegal O'Connor and Tom Sullivan on Gooling on the other end. Do you know what I mean? It was it was class. Um, it was a really good time to be honest with you. you know, it was just, it was just you know you were coming back to a really massive game every year, like you know against them, and um, yeah, that was it was really enjoyable. I I I really enjoyed that part of it. To be honest with you, going up against those guys, like twenty ten, you won all Ireland, but like I don't think people actually look back at that court team and realize how good it was. Like Graham Canty at centre back was just an absolute warrior. Noel, yeah, you, Daniel Gooding. It must have just been unbelievable to be part of that team. Yeah, I suppose it's only you know you get a chance to look back in it, um, and we had a really solid team. Like we we beat an awful lot of teams. Like you know, um, like geez, we like we, when we beat Tyrone in two thousand nine, Dublin two thousand ten in semi finals, uh, carrying a couple of monsters, um, Kildare and Down probably their best teams for a good couple of years. Then you know we beat the both of them, beat Mayo in a couple of league finals as well. You know what I mean? So. Um, that it was a very good time, a very special time, um, and then of course people only say you only won one. Joe would have all loved to win two or three, but that was time was very competitive. Like you had, um, like Kerry won in thousand and, or uh, sorry, Tyrone won in thousand nine, we won in thousand and ten, Dublin eleven, Joe you know, Donegal twelve, Dublin again thirteen, Kerry fourteen. Joe, you know, so it was really competitive at the time, like. And what would you say, like, was the main difference between then and now? Like, was it just the mentality you had back then that you would never settle for a second best? 
Oh, yeah, I think we'd really, I came into a really mature squad. Like, you know, a lot of them were in their mid to late 20s. Their only focus was winning in All-Ireland. And, you know, like they like their personal lives, they were very settled. Everyone was very settled and really focused on winning out. Um, they were very decent, genuine guys. Like, they they, they always, when they, whenever they were beaten, they never, there was never anyone digging each other out, really. Like, they were, they always backed each other. And as a, a young fellow to come into that, like, you knew that for them it was the all and or nothing. So if you didn't kind of buy into it, you were probably going to head out the door fairly swift. Like, so that suited me grand. Like, I was mad keen for football, mad keen to play at that level. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was just a great maturity there. Do you know what I mean? They'd been through a couple of hard times and then um, they were able to come through it at the other end and, and, get, and win the all Ireland. I suppose then in kind of this decade just gone, maybe we just had a young team and, uh, only kind of starting maybe to turn it around a bit now, do you know what I mean? And as I said, it was, it was we were very young and probably a lot of turnover in the team, and we just probably couldn't get couldn't get it going. And the like the players in that team we've already mentioned, but like Nicholas Murphy and Alan O'Connor as well. Yeah. Murphy, you must have just been so prepared from training that year going into the match because some of the players who make American in training that year were yeah. the best players in the country. Yeah, like I remember 2009, I marked Paddy Kassan every training session. He couldn't get into the team, got into 2010, won all star. Do you know what I mean? That was the kind of quality you were marking. And like in 2010, you had Alan O'Connor and Aidan Wild start to midfield, and they were marking Nicholas Murphy and Derek Havan every night in training. Like, do you know, so um, it was unbelievable. Like, do you know, um, and then you had some of our backs then, were, were, like we're marking Daniel Goulding and Donegal O'Connor. It was just really competitive at the time, do you know what I mean? So uh, it was a really enjoyable time and to be operating at that level was, you know, it was fairly class, do you know. And how special of a manager was Conor Cunha? Yeah, he's, um, I suppose looking back, no, he, I suppose he'd played and done it. He kind of, as a player, he didn't take, didn't hold back really as such and, he was fairly forthright in the, as well when he had to be with us. I suppose looking back, no, he was a really good delegator. You know, um, he let the guys who had the expertise do their job. Like we had a really good S and C at the time, in the panel, really good video guys, um, good coach, and he let them at it. And then he had to step in when he had to, and he'd he'd really good, as I said, mature players. So like they they almost pleased it themselves, like the players, like you know, there was great respect for the older players and. If you didn't feel like you were kind of working hard enough, you I, I always felt that geez, I was leaving those older players down a bit, and you didn't want to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like so, um, he kind of he ran it almost like a, a corporation, like you know, had his different guys running different things, and it worked very well. And good guys under him. And like, what would you say you're going to miss most about the intercounty game now? Uh, definitely, uh, people always say I definitely will miss the crack that, and the dressing room. That would have been a big part of my enjoyment. I'd, I'd be down to training very early. Do you know what I mean? Always might stay after, then do a little bit of kicking and stuff. So uh, I think definitely, like maybe the having that purpose or direction, like you know, every year uh, in the earlier years it was right. We're going to win the Munster, the All Ireland. That was our target, and it was that direction to go get it. Whereas, and this year even I know it's a smaller one, but look, we're going to win Division Three and get out of it. Do you know, to have that kind of kind of purpose or let's say goal to work towards was something that for my personality anyway I, I really enjoy, do you know what I mean? And and to be a part of a team, um or geez, I couldn't think of anyone who would do any individual sports. Do you know what I mean? I think being a part of a team and having that kind of goal to, to work towards together was always uh, something that really attracted me towards it anyway. And has management now or coaching and appealed to you yet or is uh, it just great? I do a small bit in the school, all right, the last the last good few years. Um Definitely take a bit of a break now, you know, and I probably get roughed and definitely help at the club fairly, fairly swift. But still have a good few years in the way playing, so we'll focus on that a while anyway. I think. And um, like, was it was it great to have training? I suppose during COVID nineteen, during level five, because it was as you were saying earlier, the purpose you had every evening, I suppose, to be able to do something even for your own mental health. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Uh, I definitely found like in terms of mentally. During the COVID, when we had to go up and do our running or do our weights and log it back, it got a bit tedious. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and you're not our own lads. Like your training is an individual for a team sport, which is it's it's hard to do for a very long time. Do you know what I mean? Everyone does it in the off season, but to do it for such a long time was tough going. So it was yeah, I I really enjoyed being back the last month, the last couple of months. It was it was brilliant to be honest with you. And um, like 
you know, you've come up probably against the greatest ever club team of all time, Kirsty. Yeah. I know yeah. myself from Galway, unfortunately. But um, is has it been disappointed not being able to get over the line because you've nearly won everything in the game? Yeah. Yeah. It's the, just a big one. Like I just, it would be, you know, you finish on the spot. We won it, like, and as you said, it's, they're like the Dublin of the club team. It's just we've come up against them twice now, um, and it's just like they're they are unbelievable. You'd have to say, in fairness, and their their class, but like we just have to keep plugging away. Like you, like you, you just never know. Like they were beaten this year. Do you know what I mean? Like so, you just have to keep going, and you never know. It might be your year. Do you know what I mean? So, um. Like it would be the ultimate to be honest with you. I'd love to I'd love to get my hands on it, but we'll see how we get on for the next couple of years. Maybe the younger guys will have to drive us on a little bit more. Would there be a hope that they might play the club championship this year for you? In the the like the provincial, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I'd say in Cork anyway, to try to get the county final done and then I'd say we'll be having like that county final is fixed for March. So then I'd say the club championship for 2021 will be starting fairly quick after that in Cork anyway, do you know what I mean? The first round, so uh, probably not, not for, no, I'd say end of 2021, maybe, maybe hopefully if we if we come in the county then. And it's like, with huge successful clubs, your Curry Finns, your Vincent's, your Cross McLean's, Nemo Rangers, um, Dr. Crokes, is there a huge like emphasis on skills, do you think, in Nemo Rangers? Yeah, ours, like, if anyone came to watch us training, like, they'd be saying, ours is very uncomplicated, we do our tactics in that, but ours is very uncomplicated training, it's get the basic skills down, young, early, good, comfortable on the ball, and then doing it at a really high intensity, do you know what I mean? And being able to do that and make good decisions at, 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 in games where, you know, it's a it's time of the game where it's most important, do you know what I mean? And, and be able to execute the skills when it's the most important, and if you can cover those bases, like, you, you go a long way. I know we work on tactics and kickouts, like everyone, but it's just getting our basics down at good high intensity and executing, you know, when it matters, really. Would you feel there's a bit too much of an emphasis on the gym compared to skills in today's game? Uh, there probably is. It's probably a baseline now to have a baseline level of fitness and a baseline level of gym. You can see the younger guys coming in, even to the cork panel, they're physically well used to weights, a lot of them. Do you know what I mean? Like we, like I wouldn't have went on a program until I was about 21 properly, like, do you know, uh, whereas now they're coming through those underage squads, do you know, and they're well used to it, and then they're just, it probably takes them less to, to get up to the inter-county size then, like, do you know what I mean, when they, once they come into senior. And Billy Morgan, like, how much of a legend is he in the Rangers? Ah, yeah, he's a, he's a very good, very good guy. He's, um, he he would have involved with our seniors last year. Um, he's like, he's just. I know he's a bit of a legend, but he's just around the club so often. He'd be watching training, watching games, or having a point, or going for a run down the club. So you'd see him so often. Like you might take him a little bit for granted, but he is. He's a massive legend. Um, I suppose he's a real. He's a national legend, really. Like, and we're lucky to have him in our place. And he's still passing on wisdom to the guys, which is great. The club final against Perrin that day. Um, they just got into their groove, but like, how tough is it coming up against Curvin when they get into their groove and you just cannot stop them? Yeah, I suppose, I think they're definitely a different animal when they get to Crow Park. I suppose it dries up a bit in March, I suppose we were done an, al- an awful lot of analysis on them, let's say, in, in a Connacht club games, you know, in All-Ireland club semis, and they, a lot of the time they just got over the line, do you know what I mean? Like, maybe pulled away towards the end, we were saying we could have a right good go here. But geez, they they really know what they're doing, and like they have a lot of fellas who are real physical specimens. Do you know what I mean? Like they they look like inter county players an awful lot of them. So, uh, yeah, I thought like in fairness, last the last the last time we played, they got an early goal, probably rocked a few of our lads a bit. Like um, we worked very hard against them, and a lot of things we done okay, but we just didn't offer enough attacking threat. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, look, hopefully, I don't know will we ever get a chance to play against them again, but. Um, you just have to learn from those things, like. And would you would you say you've struggled on a certain area when you played them on your own performance? Uh, just again, I would say attacking wise. I know the first day they they cleaned up against us defensively, but like I thought against them in the semi, we worked really hard, you know, and bar the first goal, take the first goal over. We missed an awful lot of scores towards the end. I just think attacking wise, you have to make a count against them up there, do you know what I mean? And you have to get enough ball and. 
uh, and keep the ball up there. Um, I just felt we were working very hard to try contain him and, and try, you know, to hassle him and harry him. And then we just we maybe didn't have the the energy or the bodies up forward when we were when we were looking to to attack them. And their execution probably wasn't great either, which didn't help either when you saw a few opportunities. And um, Dublin looks set for six in a row. Can you see them being stopped this year? No, I don't think. Uh, like they're so strong, you'd wonder like would a pick of the three teams left beat them? Like do you know what I mean? They just look so strong. Like. And um, in Leinster as well, like we've seen. I don't. I, you haven't had social media, but I'm not sure. Did you see? Uh, former West Mead footballer John Connell and Ledger about yeah. the and, um Do you think it is a huge issue with the fund in Dublin are getting compared to the rest of the country or is it just that when teams play them they're actually just beaten before they play them? Yeah, probably a little bit of both at the, the second point anyway. I'd say teams are just, you know, they just pair them now like some of the teams in, in Leinster like if a Division 3 or Division 14 came up against them I'd say they'd be massively fairing the worst like uh, the funding probably is a bit of an issue. Like you know, I think, like Dublin, I'd say the, the, the Dublin GA now are nearly like they're nearly self-sufficient. Now I'd say, I'd say they can nearly fund themselves. Like they're they're such a kind of a, a like they're not like a commercial beast. Like do you know what I mean? I think maybe definitely we could go along to funding other teams or um, other counties as well. Do you know what I mean? A bit more, a bit better. Um, so yeah, I think. And that definitely, as you said, the fair factors definitely they're playing against. So now for every team, you could you probably go out fairing. She's thinking the worst we could possibly get a hiding here, like you know. So um, yeah, I do think they'll win the six in a row. All right. Yeah, and it's like do you think in the next few years they could even do more because like Jim Connolly's gone, Jack McCaffrey's gone, yeah. and you're still able to bring in these lads who are just as good as them. Yeah, when you see the likes of Mannion Howard coming on, like tis tis reckless, like you know. Um, I don't think Keane Sullivan has has got much game time either yet this year. Do you know what I mean? So uh, they just have like they they just need to bring through one or two now every year. Do you know what I mean? Just to keep it going. But I do think I do I thought there was definitely potential in Donegal this year and Kerry, um, and then further down the line maybe ourselves Cork to challenge him and maybe Tyrone if they play a bit more of an expansive game plan. And um, look, it's going to have to come to an end sometime, and I think they'd probably be one of the teams to catch him. Um. Last year you played them yourselves in Pro Park and you gave them a huge rattle early on, probably just the last 10 yeah. minutes their experience counted. Yeah. But what was the most thing that impressed you when you do play Dublin that time? Uh, they just kind of didn't really panic. Like they, I, they just played like a team that have uh, been there and seen it all before, you know what I mean? And they just they just seem to be relentless on the ball. Like they just, they're really economic. Like they just pass it around, pass around, look for the opportunities and they create so much opportunities on top of that they can just rack up big scores and then they're just physically massive like really powerful do you know what i mean like just really powerful like i couldn't get over some of the size of them do you know what i mean for fellas who are so young um but then they just have as i said they know what they're doing they're, they'll back themselves in defense to go one-on-one -on -one defenders you know man to man as well you know what i mean so um like they, they just they just have been seen it all like and they just seem really in control do you know what i mean they never panicked Absolutely, and yeah. like with Cork as well, like there must be a huge amount going into coaching, um, especially last year, like when you look, you won the minor and the yeah. other Ireland. Uh, yeah, I suppose like that was like the twenties won the All Ireland. They got a manager very late in the day, like, and they just went out and did it. Like that was a bit of a bit of a surprise. And the minors were beaten in Kerry by our beaten by Kerry and Munster, so they were huge. Just they were they actually done a great job with the lads. So look, there is talent there, and like there, there is good guys putting time into. It. I know the minor manager and the twenty manager, uh, pretty well. So they're really good guys. So um, look, hopefully that's just even another kickstart, you know, another shot in the arm for Cork football, really, and hopefully push on the way up. And who would you say was the best player you played with during your county career? Uh, there's a few, like um, obviously the likes of Graham was was a really good player. Uh, I thought then like so Daniel Gould and Donald O'Connor were, were very good to play with. Like I played with Daniel through college and oh, he's my age and like I suppose we won a Sigerson twenty one in All Ireland together and he kicked huge frees in all those finals. Do you know what I mean? Like so he, he really um done it when the pressure was on. So they're really good players to have played with, do you know what I mean? Um I'd say Graham, Nicholas, Anthony Lynch would have been all heroes of mine growing up. Um so they would have been some of the 
and then Daniel would have been my own age. So a really good player to play with, you know. And your toughest opponent during your career? Um, I suppose I would have marked the two O'Shea's uh, in diff- different, I would have played in different lines and marked them. They were really good players, obviously. Really comfortable on the ball, you know. And, like They were not afraid to go forward and, and they could both kick a score. Um, two of those were really good. Um, and kind of picked up James McCarthy a few times. He's just a very good player as well, like makes key moments and like at the right times, you know what I mean? He really makes the impact there. So uh, I've been lucky enough to mark some really good guys and, and you know, and it was good to, put, to kind of pitch wits against them, really. And the best manager you worked under? I'd say Connor, obviously. Uh, he was a really good delegator, you know, he was a real pro player and made sure the players were driving it. And any good team, I think this, the players drive the standards and that was what it was under that setup then. And just finally, you mentioned you played in the Sigerson Cup. Um, how special was it to play in? But do you think something has to be done with the way it is today? Yeah, I think it was very special. Um, we had a really good group. Like we weren't. It was my fourth year in CIT in Cork, and like the first three years weren't. We weren't that good. Like we weren't. I suppose we were. Just lots of fellas playing on different teams, so we maybe weren't as organised as we'd like. And then we just got it together that year. Uh, Keith Ricken, who's the Cork 20 manager, was our manager. He made sure everyone bought in. He made sure all the senior and the county fellas were there nearly all the time, you know, which was really important. And we got it together that year and um, it was really, really special to win it. Uh, I think definitely it needs to be played. It's a huge, huge weekend, like, um, and it's a huge tournament for people. I'd be big on maybe getting rid of the pre season cups, you know, your McGrath Cup and your McKenna Cup and all that stuff. And maybe that might be the time to play it, you know, maybe a bit of December, January. and but it definitely has to be a, a place for it. And just to make a cup, do, do players enjoy playing in pre-seasons at all, do you feel? I think it's very important for maybe guys who are trying to break into the squad, do you know what I mean? For other guys, like it's a bit of a, a loosen up, do you know what I mean? I didn't enjoy it anyway, to be honest I just, I prefer to do a bit of training and get ready for the league, do you know what I mean? Rather than, rather than play it, do you know, I just... I think it's good for maybe developmental guys more than empty. Absolutely. Well, thanks a million for your time, Paul Gary. You're welcome. No bother.